A fire broke out at an electric vehicle charging station in British Columbia. No vehicles were involved, and at first glance, it looked like just a standard fire. But this one's a little different, and a key detail about how this charger operates, it might surprise you. You found stashed. I'm Pat, firefighter, mechanical engineer, and battery guy. This incident happened in New Westminster on October 11th, 2025. I first learned about this incident through this expertly shot video. I'm sure you can tell exactly what's going on here, but it did take a little bit of digging on my end. Thankfully, the exact cross street was included in the post, which made researching the incident a lot easier. This fire was at an on-the-run charging station, a setup connected to a gas station, with two chargers capable of charging four vehicles at once. At first, I thought this was another incident involving another electric vehicle fire at a charging station, but it turns out only the charger itself was on fire. That's because the unit involved isn't your typical DC fast charger. These particular chargers actually double as battery energy storage systems, using the same lithium-ion battery technology you'd find inside an electric vehicle. When you look at the photos and the videos from the scene, you can see a significant fire coming from the charging cabinet. Thankfully, fire crews responded quickly before it spread to the rest of the site. One thing I do want to point out, it does not appear that there were any emergency stops or disconnects located near the unit. We really need to standardize a way for first responders to isolate these chargers, get power shut off, and I really hope the department was able to shut down power before starting firefighting operations. Now, there's no official confirmation yet on exactly what failed inside that unit, whether it was the electrical equipment itself, the wiring, or a battery module, but here's why this incident caught my attention. A number of chargers worldwide are starting to use battery-integrated DC fast charging strategies. These are sometimes called battery-buffered chargers. They're designed to store energy locally and then dump it into the vehicles at a much higher rate than the grid itself can provide. And it's a smart idea, in a sense, because there's a lot of areas that just don't have the grid capacity needed for EV charging. The internal batteries handle the high power demand required to fast charge a vehicle, while the grid itself can take its time charging those batteries afterwards. The downside is that if multiple customers use that charger back to back, you can end up in a situation where fast charging isn't available, while those internal batteries are still recharging from the grid. Let's talk about what that means in practical terms. Most of these battery buffered chargers on the market, they can carry anywhere from 50 to 200 kilowatt hours of energy storage. To put that in perspective, that's roughly one to two full electric vehicle batteries worth of charging sitting inside that cabinet. Unfortunately, under current codes and standards, these are realistically, they're classified as battery energy storage systems. And I say that, unfortunately, because most of the time, these chargers aren't being installed or regulated like that. Companies tend to treat these just like chargers. And when it comes to safety and oversight, it's pretty much still the wild, wild west out there. Now, for most people, that setup works great. It's flexible, it's efficient, and it helps expand EV charging into areas where the power grid is limited. But from a fire safety standpoint, it also changes the hazard profile on these sites. And that's something people don't tend to realize. Because now we're not just talking about a charger with some wires and electronics. We're talking about a stationary lithium ion battery system in a public location, often installed just a few feet away from fuel pumps, parked vehicles, or the convenience store itself. In other words, it's effectively a small battery energy storage system, or BESS, built right into the charging housing, and that's something firefighters on site were likely unaware of. Surprisingly, this is one of the first examples of this type of system I've seen catching fire out there, at least that I'm aware of. I'm sure that there's other examples of this out there. Fire officials haven't released details about the point of origin or specific details about the charger itself, but if you look at the details online, they do show that this specific charger was using a battery buffer design. And if you look at the aftermath, those components down low in the cabinet, they appear to be the batteries themselves. On top of that, look at this part of the video right here. After the fire's mostly out, it does appear that there are still batteries inside off-gassing. But unfortunately, this video clip is just too short to really get a good sense of what's going on. I've seen discussion lately that this company is actively replacing these battery integrated chargers with a direct to grid unit, which could indicate reliability or safety concerns. If that's the case, this fire could be a pretty good warning sign for them. 
battery buffered chargers, they do fill a gap in the charging network, but they need the same level of fire safety consideration as any other battery energy storage system out there. That means proper spacing from other hazards, ventilation, and testing beyond what's typically required for just an electrical enclosure. So at this point, what I can say is this. If you're in the fire service or you're doing inspections, keep an eye out for these systems. They look like standard DC fast chargers, but what's inside is very different. And as I've said time and time again, when it comes to lithium ion battery systems, even the small ones can create major issues when things go wrong. 